circle will rise. To do for each other, to avenge any brother, a fight to the knife and the knife to the hilt. A brother now languishes in prison through the instrumentality of one Colonel Theodore Walters, the guiding spirit of the Sphinx Club, a band of amateur criminologists who have made the mistake of tampering with the circle. I submit to you the name of Theodore Walters. What is your verdict? Death. So be it. The drawing will proceed. It is fitting that the honor should go to the only woman member of the circle. I congratulate you. Tonight, by a means already devised, you will execute the sentence of death on Theodore Walters. And may the luck of the circle be with you. To do for each other, to avenge any brother, a fight to the knife and the knife to the hilt. I say, what a charming creature. <laughs> and what gorgeous eyes she has. The better to keep track of Brand with, my dear. <laughs> <laughs> I say, Brand, it strikes me you're being a bit selfish with her. How about it, fellow members of the Sphinx Club? All in favor of forcing Brand to introduce us to his fiance, say aye. 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 <laughs> say, you fellows trying to rip me? <laughs> you forget it's only two weeks since I met Miss Parker. Well, Mary and Ace and repented me, no. <laughs> <laughs> two weeks ago, he was perfectly normal. He couldn't have been torn away from us. Then suddenly he meets this charmer and Bluey. He announces he's going to resign from the Sphinx Club and do the middle aisle stuff. <laughs> <laughs> really, old chap, I don't know how we shall carry on without you. Well, maybe this doesn't put our little Sphinx Club on the map. It certainly does. Everybody's talking about it. You know, the Secret Service has been on this case for months. Well, look who they are, look who we are. <laughs> <laughs> Say, by the way, did you know that Colonel Wallace was going to propose Brand's successor tonight? Well, that's interesting. Did he tell you anything about him? No, nothing except that he's a Hindu. A Hindu? My word, I hope it's not Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see the club has its heads together. Hi, Hello, Colonel. Hello. How are you? Some deep problem? We were just talking about my successor in the club. Well, he may succeed you, Brand, but he will never supplant you. Thanks, Colonel. But I'm sure you'll find this gentleman from India well qualified for membership. I asked him to meet us here. Good. Uh, Rankin, uh, we're expecting a Mr... Yoganda. A uh, Mr. Yoganda. Uh, show him in here as soon as he arrives. Yes, sir. Say, by the way, Colonel, when do you expect to occupy your new home? Tonight, for the first time. But Melody Manor is not new. In fact, it's one of the oldest houses on Long Island. You know, I love those old mansions. They always have such interesting legends. Ain't scared, are ya? Oh, no! Don't be a fear. Everybody around here knows me. I'm the old dame. Well, I'm Nora Rafferty. Please go away, won't you? Why, well, uh, I just come around here to cheer you up. Better save all that shivering for when the real thing happens. It's right down. We might as well be neighborly. Ever hear about Richard Gray's and Scope? Oh, no. Well, it's been fooling around this house for years. Oh. Ever hear how this place got the name of Melody Manor? No. And I'll tell you. Some 50 years ago, this house was owned by Dr. Travers Grayson. He was murdered. Oh. 
Sitting right where you are, Tick. He had a wife and a son, Richard Grayson. This boy was in love with the little girl down the road. And every night, he'd go up the attic window and play a certain melody on his violin. It was his way of saying goodnight to her. And now comes Grayson's ghost. And now goes Nora Rafferty. One night, when young Grayson was playing his violin, the girl didn't appear. She had run away with a fella from the city. Some say Grayson went crazy. Some say that he wandered away. Anyhow, he was never seen again. Mr. Uganda. Oh, Uganda. This is Brand Osborne. I'm pleased indeed. I'm glad to know you, sir. Uh, may I present Mr. Carter? How do you do? Uh, Mr. Graham? How are you? And Mr. Wattle? It's a pleasure, I'm sure. All members of the Sphinx Club. I'm honored indeed. Your recent achievements will be a brilliant addition to the annals of criminology. Annals of all like a Toreador. Yes, Rankin? For you, Colonel Waters. For me? Oh, thank you, Rankin. Pardon me. Rankin. Sir? Who gave you this? A gentleman, sir. I asked him if there was to be an answer, and he said that you would know the answer. Hmm. Take a look at that, Brand. What do you suppose this means? It means that I've been marked for death by the crooked circle. Pardon me, may I see that message? impression of a nut. Is it a rope? A rope? Can it be a noose? No, it's, it's not a noose. I have it. It's, it's a string. Yes, it is a string. Gentlemen, evil is on the way. And it's tied with a string. A string? Can't you be a little more definite? No, I'm sorry, but not at the moment. Mr. Uganda has an uncanny faculty for seeing into the future. Tonight, of all nights, Colonel Walters, you will require protection. And I appreciate your interest, but I'm sure it's all just a bluff. Well, nevertheless, we're going to Melody Manor with you tonight. Mr. Osmond, please. Pardon. Yes, Rankin? Miss Parker is here, sir. Miss Parker? Here? Yes, sir. I've shown her into the library. She says it's urgent. Excuse me, gentlemen. Bren. Oh, my dear. What is it? Has anything happened? Not so loud. Bren, where are you going tonight? Why, to Colonel Walter's place, Melody Manor. You mustn't. Why not? For your sake and mine. Promise me that you won't go there tonight. Thelma, I don't understand. What do you mean? I mean that if you love me, you, you'll do as I say. Why, of course I love you, but... Surely you must have some reason. I have. You promised to resign from the Sphinx Club, didn't you? Well, I want you to do it now. That's impossible. I've got to stand by Colonel Walters tonight. His life's been threatened. Yes, I know it. I trust you'll pardon this intrusion. I was seeking the telephone. Oh, that's quite all right. Uh, Miss Parker, may I present Mr. Uganda? I'm honored indeed. I do. Uh, Mr. Uganda is going to be my successor in the Sphinx Club. Mr. Truesdale on the phone, sir. Oh, pardon me, my attorney. What is it, Truesdale? Oh, pardon the deception, but this is not Truesdale. Then who in the devil is it? One who would suggest that a woman's advice is sometimes good. Say, what the deuce? Now, you assure me that you carried out your instructions? Yes. 
Are you positive? Yeah. The Walters is in there. Yes, I know. What is to be done must be done tonight. The slightest mistake will prove most dangerous. Remember that. Oh, yes, India is poetic, beautiful, exquisite. <laughs> I was just telling Miss Parker about some of the charms of my own country. Oh, Brand, it must be wonderful. I'm afraid most Americans picture India as overrun by squatting gentlemen rendering flute concerts to snakes. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, I must apologize. Oh, not at all. You wanted the telephone. Yes. Well, you'll find it in the hallway just to the left. Oh, thank you. I must run along now. All right, darling. Who are you? The gentleman who gave you some good advice. Then perhaps you'll be good enough to explain this unannounced visit. Certainly. The dog Walters paid us a visit the other day. We are returning that call. Oh, the crooked cycle, eh? Exactly. Listen, Brandburn. You think you're going to see Thelma Parker tonight? Well, you're not. <coughs> Sounds like we're going to have company. Hey, was you blowing a whistle? No, I was toning up the same. Well, what's going on? I seen a guy crawl up there and go in that window. Well, come on, we'll get him. Get him off. What's the idea? Get off. Wait. Hurry up. But look, if I'm busted from the collector duty, it's all your fault. Well, well, come on. Put that hand on. Give me that pipe. Now put those hands up. Put them up. Well, what kind of a party is this? It's all right, officers. He didn't get very far burglarizing my apartment. Your apartment? I seen him crawling through that window. So I runs over and crawls up the enter room. Yeah, and I come too. Yeah, and I come too. I tell you, this is my apartment. This man forced me at the point of a gun to change clothes with him. Take him away, boys. I think he's crazy. If you allow this criminal to escape, I'll have you both dismissed. Nonsense, officers. Take him away. Psst. Come here. Suppose this guy's on the level. We'd be in an orphan jam. Yeah, we want to die. What do you think we're going to do? Let's take them both in. Just what I was going to say. Come on. 
After carefully thinking the matter over, I've decided there's some doubt as to the identities, and so I'm going to run you as both then. Wait, nonsense. For just a moment. If there's any doubt in your minds, I can settle it quickly. Rankin, I want... Rankin! Did you ring, sir? Will you tell these officers who is master here? Why, you asked. Well, Rankin, what... Hey, you know who this boy is? Never saw him before in my life. Why, you rattlebrain! Just what I thought. Come on, you. Come with me. You hey, come wait with a minute, just too. Listen. Yeah, come with me, too. Well, well, I'm not running right your sail be used against you. Hey, Sergeant, there's a high-class mug I picked up on a second-story job. Yeah, and I picked him, too. Yeah, Mike picked him, too. Now, listen, Sergeant, I demand to be heard. My name is Brand Osborne. And my name is Sergeant Murphy. And I can't tell you how glad I am to meet you. <laughs> well, never mind the comedy. Take me to Captain Drake. I'm a personal friend of his. <laughs> <laughs> Another friend of the captain's, eh? <laughs> Every guy that gets pinched is a friend of the captain. <laughs> Captain Drake, here's another friend of yours, sir. Oh, hello, Captain. Why, it's Brian Osborne. Oh, this brought me in. What does this mean? The Krimmer brought him in, sir. Mike brought him in, too, sir. Why, uh, I, I, I... Yeah, Mike brought him in, too. I never heard of such stupidity. Yeah, that's not the half of it. But I'm late for an appointment now, Captain. If you'll walk out with me, I'll give you the lowdown on the whole story. Certainly, and I'm very sorry this is my boy. Why did you have to come here? Oh. At midnight, you look at the clock and this. Fifty years ago, it struck thirteen, and old Mr. Graydon was found dead. Again, it struck thirteen, and old Mrs. Graydon was found dead. Again, it took 13, and young Graydon ain't never been seen since. Tonight, if that clock should strike 13, beware. Uh, beware? Beware. Oh, if that clock strikes 13, I'll be more than beware. I'll be gone. Well, you certainly got what you wanted. As old as the hills and as isolated as an igloo. No doubt filled with fragrant memories and traditions of a dead past. Come along. I'm anxious to show you the place. Oh, I'm sorry you got a headache, sir. Shall I get you a bromo, sir? Think of it, Mr. Uganda. Oh, oh, please keep away from that clock, mister. And please, Colonel Walters, get out of that chair. Nora, what's the matter with you? Well, there's a ghost in the house, and he plays the violin. And when he does, something always happens to somebody. Where did you get all this rock? A queer old man dropped in to cheer me up. Miss Parker's apartment? Oh, hello, Margaret. Uh, call Miss Parker, please. Well, I'm sorry Miss Parker isn't here, sir. But I had an appointment with her at 10 o'clock. Well, where did she go? Well, I really shouldn't say, sir, but she did mention something about a, a Melody Manor. What's that? You, you heard her say Melody Manor? And every time the ghost plays that violin, something always happens to somebody. Don't be silly, Nora. Ghosts are a myth. Yes, sir, but maybe this one doesn't know it's one. <laughs> Nora, 
Do you know what a myth is? Yes, sir. A female moth. <laughs> <laughs> Run along, Nora, and open the door. Oh. <laughs> I'm afraid Nora doesn't enthusiasm for Melody Manor. What do you make of her story, Uganda? Evil is on the way. There's a man at the door to see you, sir. Says he's a neighbor, but he looks like a miss. Send him in, Nora. <gasps> oh. How do you do, sir? How do you do? I live in the little house at the foot of the hill. And I brought you these. Oh, thanks. I'm very fond of tomatoes. Are you, sir? I'm so glad. My name is Walters. To whom am I indebted for this gift? They call me Armin the Hermit. But no one ever sees me. I'm too slick for them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> then uh, why honor us with a visit? I always visit the folks in this house the first night. No telling how long they'll be here. <laughs> and what's he mean by that? It ain't often folks live in this house since the Graysons died. And I reckon there's good reason. Queer things about this house. But I ain't afraid of queer things. I ain't afraid of nothing. I hear Grayson's music. Yes. Often. Sometimes I think he pays to me. He likes me. And I like him. Because he ain't people. <laughs> He's a ghost. Yes, sir. He's a ghost. <laughs> yeah? Drop in again sometime. Evil is on the way. That's Bran. Harry, if you don't mind. Certainly. Oh, here you are. We were just... Where's Thelma? Huh? Say, what's eating you? Where's Thelma? Well, I'm sure I don't know. She's not here? Wait a minute, Bran. What's the matter with you? Plenty. Half an hour after you left my apartment, I was stuck up by one of the members of the Crooked Circle. And that isn't all. For some unknown reason, Thelma begged me not to come here. And then I found that she had suddenly left the Melody Manor. Now, I've got to find her. There's no need to worry. She will be here. Listen, if you know anything about this... Where's that fireman? Where's that fireman? What do you mean? What fireman? Never mind that stuff. Where's the guy who was pointing up that road? Come on, now. Which one of you guys done that ash for pointing? I, I did. Oh, it was you! Oh, well, <laughs> Oh, well, uh, that's different again. Uh, <laughs> I never noticed you. <laughs> I, I didn't know it was him. <laughs> uh, 
the last sucking on me. A nut house? Come now, Nora, what is it? And the violin, I heard it again. Well, did you see anything? No, sir. Did anything move? Yes, sir, I did. Well, we can go out. Perhaps Kramer will be good enough to remain here with Nora. I'd rather stay here. Oh. Mary, you and I will try the attic. Mr. again. you happen to be armed? Always. And I'll depend on you to watch this hallway. Probably valuable. Yes, I understand old Dr. Grayson had quite a collection at one time. Hey, look. Oh. Is everybody crazy around here or just a couple of you? Don't talk. Don't talk. I heard the violin. You heard a violin? Well, what would you do if you heard a full orchestra? Oh. Chap, isn't he? I wonder who he was. Well, Harry, perhaps you'd better go downstairs and join Brand. Also assure Nora that her phantom fiddler has gone on tour. Rather a disappointment, too. I should like to make his acquaintance. Just a can of glue. I'll be down presently. I'm going to rummage around a while. <laughs> well, have you bumped into any fiddling ghosts? I'm not looking for any fiddling ghosts. I'm looking for Thelma. Now, now take it easy, old man. Be, be calm. How do you expect me to be calm under circumstances like these? By the way, didn't you say that Miss Parker was an accomplished violinist? Why, yes, she is. Uh-huh, that's interesting. What do you mean? Oh, nothing, nothing at all. A very charming accomplishment playing the violin. I thought it best that I come. It is not well that you be alone too much. Did you hear that violin? It's right here in this room. It was indeed in this room. Gander, I think perhaps we'd better join the others. To you. Oh, please don't leave me here, not till after 12 o'clock anyway. Oh, did you hear anything, sir? Not a sound. I'm very fond of music, too. Well, if you ask me, I take this ghost up as a lot of hooey. Not at all. Our ghostly friend has just entertained me in the attic. Oh, and something always happens to somebody. 
Did you hear that melody? Who was it? Did you see anything? there and see what you can find. I'll meet you here in a few minutes. Okay. Hands up. Oh, I beg your pardon, Mr. Osman. I did not recognize you. Uganda. What are you doing here? Merely pursuing evil. Talk sense. Have you seen anything of Miss Parker? I'm sorry to report that I have not. We've got to concentrate on finding Miss Parker. Let's go up and have a talk with Colonel Walters. That would be impossible. Impossible? Well, what do you mean? Colonel Walters has disappeared. Disappeared? When? When the lights went out. Come on, Uganda. Oh. All right, there ain't nobody in any of them rooms. There ain't nobody in that place as far as I can see. That's not very far. Yeah, well, if you ask me, we're all going around in a circle. A circle, right. It's a crooked circle. They promised Colonel Wallace they'd get him. I guess they did. Well, why didn't you tell me they threatened him? Mm. Oh, you know, them circle guys is tough babies. They wasn't born, they was quarried. We know all about that, Primer. What we don't know is what happened to Colonel Wallace. Just what I... Hey. What's that? Colonel Waller's revolver. That proves he was in this room. Yeah? I wonder if there are any trick doors or secret passages here. Just what I was gonna say. Hey, look! It's Colonel Walters. He's dead. Strangled with a violin string. Your Gandhi said evil was on the way with a string. What's happened? Poor old chap. They got him after all. Mm, it was written that evil was on the way. Didn't I say it would be tied with a string? Krimmer, uh, get the coroner. No, no, don't do that. Why not? Well, it would be better to continue the search for Miss Parker without interference. Oh, uh, wait a minute. I'm an officer of the law. Don't overlook that fact. Well, Say, by the way, Brian, before you got here tonight, a queer-acting hunchback brought in a basket of tomatoes. That's strange. Uganda, have Nora bring in those tomatoes. Certainly, Miss Osmond. Oh, are we gonna eat? 
Now listen, Krimmer. Before this happened, Colonel Walters was in the attic. Now you go up there and see what you can find. Uh, what could you find in an attic? Ah, so you're afraid, huh? I thought so. Oh, you're picking me up, huh? All right, I'll show you. Hook up in that attic. Hook up in two attics. Come, Yellow. Yellow, huh? Well, I'll show you. Oh. Uh. Oh, well, what's the idea of interfering with an officer in the charge of his duty? I was in a hurry. Well, it's all right to be in a hurry, but take your time apart. Mr. And let go of that thing. Don't you... leave me alone. Oh, Mr. Now, Nora, you must be calm. Oh. Colonel Walters is dead. Dead? Oh! Come on, Nora, sit down. I tell you, Colonel Walters wasn't strangled. You can go, Nora. Where? Go up to the attic and stay with Krimmer. But I don't like attic. Run along, Nora. This is no place for you. If he'd been strangled, his lips and nostrils would show it. Then what do you suppose killed him? I don't know, but maybe it was poison. We'd better keep these for the coroner. I should say not. I make no bones about a thing like that. Is that good or is that good? Oh. Hey, I guess, I guess maybe we'd better be getting out of here. What's the matter with you, sir? Give put that thing away. Now, what is it? Well, what do you mean? Don't do that. Come over here and talk to me, will you? Come here. Now, come on, old man. Now, take it easy. What is it? What is it? Now, wait a minute. Now, now, now what is it? I, 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 Now, now, shh. Now, let's start it all over again. I, I, I. I got it. You heard that melody. Well, well what's the matter? I was, I was chased by the ghost himself. <laughs> Here, sit down, old man. Sit down. <laughs> what's, what's more, he kicked me. <laughs> You've got the niftiest case of heebie-jeebies I've seen in a long time. Nerves are tricky things, but a slug of this makes a person yearn for good. <clears throat> Brand. 
Brand. Brand. Brand. Brand. What's the matter? Come here, quickly. The strangest thing has just happened. Kramer disappeared. What do you mean? He, he was sitting in that chair. I, I turned to pour him a drink like this. Then I tried to give it to him and he was gone. Well, then what happened? I took the drink myself. Oh. We might as well. We're looking for everybody else. Oh, oh. Harry. Harry, you run along. I, I've got to think it over. No, no, no. Keep, keep hold of yourself, old man. Keep hold of yourself. Oh. Come on, Nora. We'll try the rear of the house. You me. Well, you didn't do me much good either. What's the matter? Some mug making you walk home? No. I I was taking a shortcut. My car broke down. Yeah. Well, it sounds phony to me. I ought to put you under arrest, only I got a murder on me hands. A murder? Who was killed? A guy named Colonel Walters. Oh. I see. Yeah, well, I wish I did. Well, come on, sister. You better beat it. All right, Captain. Good night. Good night. Well, well, this is a pleasure. Won't you sit down? Thank you. Well, what do you intend to do? First, I'm going to call for reinforcements. Then you're going to leave me to Thelma Parker? Or else? Did you ring, sir? Rankin. Yes, sir. Rankin, what are you doing here? Who rang, sir? You know this man, Rankin. I never saw him before in my life. Well, that's exactly what you said about me this afternoon in my apartment. When this man... What infernal business is this? Mr. Quimmer, he acted kind of funny. Yeah. Oh, do you think that his mind might be wandering? Well, don't worry. His mind couldn't wander very far. Oh! Oh! It's Mr. Quimmer. Where did I hit him? Oh, where did I hit him? Oh. On the head, fortunately. Oh, Come on, oh did Quimmer. I hurt you, Come. Mr. Quimmer? Now, now, oh. take it easy, old man. Take it easy. You're all right. That's your life. I'm all right. Oh. Who, who is this woman? A very charming person when you come oh, to Norway. Oh. Well, you don't you, Kramer? Brand. Oh, something always happens to somebody. Brand, Brand, come out of it, old. Come on. Come on. Oh, now two of us are dead. You've had a narrow escape. I came face to face with a policeman. Did he suspect you? Oh, he suspects everybody. Oh, I'll take care of him. Did Rankin arrive? Yes, about 30 minutes ago. Oh, good. Now, what are the plans? Meetings call for 115. 115? Well, you just have time enough to make it. Now, here. 
Here is the ring. You sure you'll go through with it? Yes. I haven't forgotten my oath. You can depend on me. And you can depend on me. So I rang for Nora, and who do you suppose answered the bell? Well, in this house, I wouldn't be surprised if it was Christopher Columbus. I rang the bell and in walked Rankin. Rankin? Well, can you beat that for service? Boy, my head feels like a bass drum. Yeah, flat and empty, huh? Uh, by the way, Krimmer, what did happen to you? Uh, well, uh, I was swinging a rolling pin, and Mr. Krimmer's head happened to come under it. <laughs> That's all right, Nora. We'll get you another rolling pin. Hey, did anyone see that Hindu? Uh, yes, I saw him come out of the library when the lights went up. If you ask me, I think he killed Colonel Walters. I wouldn't say those things, Nora, if I were you, unless I had a reason. Come to think of a brand, Uganda did object to calling the coroner. Just what I was going to say. Kramer, would you mind sitting in that chair for a moment? Oh! I wouldn't sit in that chair by half a moment. Well, there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with the electric chair till I press the button. You heard that shot, didn't you? Oh. Hmm. I've met this little gun before. Uh, oh, look! They're graves! Well, what'd you take there for dead people in balloons? Well, I don't like graves at night. Uh, what do you care, as long as you ain't in one of them? Hey, you know, this thing is turning into a mystery. It's worse than that. It's a nightmare. Come on, I think we all better go back to the house. This is a dreary place, gentlemen. Uganda, I believe you know more about this case than you pretend to know. Well, Mr. Osborne, surely you do not question my integrity. Well, frankly, I do. In fact, I question it so strongly, I'm inclined to instruct the police officer to make your arrest. Yeah, and he'd only have to instruct them once. There are no facts to permit this action, and I resent it. Oh, you do, eh? Well, you'll either lay your cards on the table right now, or be taken into custody. Suppose, uh, suppose I could and would lead you to Miss Parker. Would that induce you to forget my arrest? Why, of course it would. Where is she? Oh, uh, wait a minute now. The law is the law. If this guy needs a wrestling, he's gonna get it. I'll be responsible. Very well. I will promise to reveal everything. Will you come with me? All right, but look here. Remember this. If you're tricking us, it's gonna be tough sledding for you. Now, gentlemen, be as quiet as possible. <gasps> and I say Steve Brody took a chance. Well, stay here then. Well, I can't do that either. Well, then jump up in the air and bust. Oh. Gentlemen, this is extremely dangerous. Do you wish to proceed? Gentlemen, I want to introduce to you the Crooked Circle. Counterfeiters and Thieves Deluxe. First, I shall present the leader, your faithful servant, Rankin. I'm sorry you forced me to shoot. And here, Mr. Osborne, is an old friend. It seems inevitable that we should meet every hour or so. Yeah, and there's a mug you won't be meeting again for manage the year. Make a sap out of me, will you? 
And here are a pair of kings. Emmanuel and Louis King. And now to redeem my promise, Miss Thelma Parker. Thelma? I can't believe it. Look out, Fran! Crimmer, you idiot. It's me. I can break your confounded neck. Come on, Harry. That would be you. What's the meaning of all this? Tell me. Not now, Bran, please. I could give you a nail full. So your automobile breaks down, huh? Well, so does your alibi. And this is Miss Yvonne Rene, the only woman member of the Crooked Circle. Ladies, ring. Oh, yes, I'd almost forgotten. Many thanks. Your ring was most necessary to our little deception. What a splendid help you turned out to be. I've been tied up for hours. My, I'm glad this is over. Mr. Yogandi, don't you think you... Oh, yes. Mr. Osborne, I think it's time that I introduce myself. The Secret Service. Yes, and Miss Parker's my valued assistant. Thelma, you in the Secret Service? Yes, Fran. I'm sorry I couldn't tell you before. But a lot of people, Fran. Where have you been? One of you guys is trying to start this thing all over again. I'm certain it's here in this room. Who are you? Get out! What do you want here? I see that raising tomatoes is not your only hobby, Mr. Harmon. Get up! Get up! Get back there! Get back there! Put those hands up! Take them off! Harry, you better stay here and help Crimmer. I don't need no help. Just what I was going to say. That was Uganda's voice, and I came out of this chair. This is the source of your ghostly music. Here's the old maestro himself. <laughs> There's one of them things in every room. This is my house, and they took it away from me. And I swore if I couldn't have it, no one could. And I kept them out. <laughs> For years, I just played my violin. And Rankin came along and installed these things. <laughs> and made it very easy. Uh, Richard Grayson's ghost. <laughs> Come on, Professor. Yeah. Come on and join the orchestra. Come on. Oh, not too rough. Holman's not one of the circle. He's just an eccentric old musician. Oh, well, then will you please step over here? <laughs> right over there. Do you mind? Well? Sounds 
like the police are coming at last. Yeah. What? It's all right, officer. I phoned for the floor wagon. You may take them out. Okay, Chief. All right, you mugs. On your way. Get going. Start it, you. Hurry up. That's all right. You too. Came too. Oh, you did, huh? Well, park down out of there and let me shield these boys in the cage. Get in there. Oh, Get in And then the guy that likes ghosts came in with a basket of tomatoes and started telling us that this. Ah! Go away! You're dead! You're dead! Somebody's dead, somebody! He don't know! What's the matter with you? He, he, he's real. Have you all gone crazy? Now let me explain, Colonel Walter. Since midnight, I've held you in a state of suspended animation. We have been you frequently practice it. Well, well, why practice it on Colonel Wallers? Well, because I knew that the criminals would not attempt to kill a man who apparently was dead. Well, you better come along and report to the lieutenant. Ah, the lieutenant's got away. I got a murder on me hands. A murder? Where, in there? Yeah. Say, Riley says right. But I ain't afraid of no ghosts. I ain't afraid of nothing. Okay, Riley. Uh, about this murder. Walters isn't dead, Krimmer. He is too dead. He, he is too dead. Isn't he dead? I've seen him deader. It's all right, officer. The mystery is solved. It may be to you, but it puts down in my book as murder. <laughs> <laughs> hey, oh. where are you going? I'm going to marry the first man I meet. Look, my name is Krimmer. Oh, Mr. Krimmer. Well, something always happens to somebody. Just what I was going to say. Oh. 